Hello, you're watching Telecom TV. I'm Guy Daniels. And today we are going to look at how telcos can overcome the core data challenges hindering the journey towards truly autonomous networks. And joining me now to discuss the practical steps operators can take is Jay Rajaraman, who is APAC Head of Analytics, AI and Monetization at Nokia. Hello, Jay. It's really good to see you. Um, let me start off by asking you, what are the core data challenges that hinder telcos from really, truly harnessing their data, especially when they're striving for more autonomous operations? Thank you, Guy, for having me here. That's a good question to start. And uh, as we are seeing this move um, for telecom operators moving towards autonomous network levels four and five, as defined by the TM Forum, the management of data becomes one of the critical points for them to tackle uh, before they can get into a fully autonomous mode of operation on any part of their network. Now, there are some fundamental challenges that need to be overcome when we talk about data. Um, the first one is that telecom networks have typically grown organically and you find that data is still very siloed within organizations both from a technology perspective as well as from a business logic perspective in terms of ownership and governance now the volume and velocity of data that you are going to have when we talk about a 5g network is so much that if we do not have the ability to fundamentally have good, clean data driving these autonomous network applications, you find that you are not able to harness the power of AI and truly achieve complete control for automation within the network um, you know, through AI. And that becomes the biggest challenge that you know, we have seen our customers facing, even in advanced markets like Korea, Japan, uh, to some extent, Australia as well. And one of the things that we have also seen is that all of these networks are necessarily multi-vendor in nature. Customers have always gone for best of breed solutions and no longer monolithic um, kind of siloed architectures. But that also means that you know, the ability to manage data across multiple types of vendor systems, multiple types of applications, you know, needs to be seamless and the ability to collect that data and curate it and provide it for usage across other applications uh, in the network needs to be seamless. Now, doing all this at scale in real time across multiple vendors becomes hugely challenging from an operational perspective for any of these operators as they traverse that journey towards yeah, an autonomous network, whether it's level four or five. Thanks, Jay. Well, let's pick up on the role of AI. How critical is it to overcome these data challenges for the journey towards truly autonomous networks and effectively leverage AI? And what role does data play in accelerating telco AI? An autonomous network absolutely needs AI and machine learning you know, to become real in, this, in the true sense of the word. Now, all AI and machine learning applications and the evolution of networks to, you know, towards autonomous networks uh, level five requires that you know, the approach is completely data driven. And in order to drive that, we need to basically understand how AI ML applications will be designed for the networks. And the first and most critical point is training the models. You need to have extremely clean data you know, that is well organized, well curated, so that you know, the, mission, the models do not elicit, uh, and you're not going to have anomalous issues you know, that pop up when you're trying to manage autonomously uh, a critical infrastructure such as a telecoms network. Uh, then the second point is we have to move you know, from reactive um, analytics uh, to predictive analytics where we're able to you know, start you know, picking up on, on issues on the network at a technology level. But also we have to move onwards towards cognitive analytics where you're able to start understanding you know, patterns, trends, behavior, both from a network perspective as well as from a, from a customer perspective 
in order to truly then understand what is it that you're going to automate and how do you ensure that you're able to act in such a way that you nip problems in the bud before they actually occur. Now, to be able to deliver this, these levels of business outcomes, you, know, you need to have an understanding not just of the technology itself in terms of how the network is orchestrated in an autonomous fashion, but also use these AI ML models to look at business priorities and understand you know, how you would help deliver you know, critical applications like network slicing, like managing energy consumption and creating greater energy efficiencies across the network. Um, and fundamentally, being able to do all this in a telecoms network requires you to correlate this data across multiple domains. Um, and that is across the radio, across the core, across uh, different applications, across the transport network. And to be able to do that, you know, seamlessly for any AI ML model, they need to be able to handle data that is coming from all of these multivariate sources in real time and uh, be able to then respond accurately to a, an operational request for automation by understanding these patterns and understanding what they have been trained with in terms of clean data. Well, that's very interesting, Jay. Can, can we look at this in some more detail? I'd like to ask you what practical steps that operators can take to address these challenges and build this consumable data layer, moving from their current state to a more data-driven operational model. I, I like the way you said that, to actually decouple uh, you know, the, the data layer, because that's precisely the first step that needs to happen. Um, all operators need to decouple the data layer from the applications uh, in order to ensure that they are then able to create you know, uh, data as elemental sources of truth that can then be exposed and consumed you know, by higher order applications, whatever those may be. Now, in order to do that, um, one, there are two fundamental structures you know, to that architecture. The first one, is a data mesh architecture, understanding how to federate data that is coming across different domains within the network and being able to understand its, its lineage, being able to understand its ownership, being able to understand where it's coming from and where it's uh, going to be stored. And as a result of that, being able to provide the governance necessary as this data is being classified and organized within the network. Um, and that includes, you know, understanding personally identifiable information, you know, if anything is private and needs to be secure um, before it is consumed by other applications, understanding um, ownership and stewardship and, uh, you know, picking up issues in terms of data quality and consistency. Uh, before you know the data is exposed uh, to other functions and other applications within the network. Now, this data mesh architecture will then automatically feed into what we call a data catalog strategy, which is essentially you know like a catalog of all the data that is there within the network that you know we are able to observe, that we are able to play with, that we are able to compose, that we are able to curate, collate, correlate, um, and expose you know, towards the rest of the organization or indeed even to other you know, third-party enterprises you know, through an application interface. So this becomes the fundamental strategy of you know, building that data layer. The second part of the strategy is to actually ensure that the data itself you know, is present as atomic elemental sources of truth within this organization. And this becomes a bit like playing with Lego, I guess. You know, you will be able to then compose, reuse these, these data products, as we call it, and be able to organize them, uh, link them together, enrich this data with uh, um, you know, other sources of information, like say, for example, uh, geolocation information in order to make it more useful and more rational towards other applications that want to get a sense of what is going on on the network, you know, either from a service level perspective or from a customer perspective. And we can do this either in aggregate 
or we could do it at a very, very granular per subscriber level in order to understand, you know, the quality of experience or the quality of service, you know, for a particular customer. Now, building that decoupled data layer and uh, building that unified data platform necessarily means that we need to have the adaptations available for ingesting the data across multiple domains. Because the AI ML models that drive automation on the network, you know, are truly powerful only when they are able to understand the quality of experience across the entire data pipeline. And that necessarily means ingesting data, you know, from multiple vendor sources, you know, across multiple domains, you know, like I mentioned, radio or transport services, and being able to stitch a holistic data pipeline and a holistic view of what is happening in real time for that service as it is being provided across that entire network. And being able to you know, manage that at scale is something that is the ultimate goal for all of these um, telecom operators today as they traverse this journey towards a fully autonomous network. Observe, understand, and then act in order to ensure that you do not lose the fidelity and you do not lose the quality of experience that is necessary today in order to make these uh, telco operators even more relevant for their customers. Well, great insights into the decoupling model there, Jay, and why telcos should do this. But I'd like to ask a final question to you. How exactly does Nokia help operators to implement these solutions and overcome these data hurdles that will transform their data into a strategic asset for autonomous operations? We walk the talk. And what we have done is embark upon a data management strategy that allows our customers to accelerate their journey towards a completely autonomous network. Now, the way we have approached this from a data management perspective is to actually fundamentally treat data as a product. And productizing data means fundamentally looking at this data mesh architecture where we consider metadata uh, of all the data that is there on the network, understand its uh, provenance, build a data pipeline you know, with governance, uh, quality metrics built in, and ensure that you know, this data is organized in a way that allows it to be reused, allows it to be composed, to be curated, to be mashed, if you will, uh, into, into specific uh, uh, you know, applications or specific use cases that a customer might want. So fundamentally, building the data mesh uh, you know, architecture within a customer as well as organizing their data as data products becomes the, the, the structure with which the data management strategy that Nokia has adopted comes to the fore. Now, Nokia has always believed in providing our customers the, the choice of picking the best of breed um, across their network. And we are multi-vendor compatible and we pride ourselves on that. Um, we have, uh, support for all of the standards you know in the telecoms industry whether that is coming from 3gpp it's coming from uh, tm forum itf you name it and what we ensure is that we have the adaptations ready out of the box for any of our customers using a whole host of different types of vendors um, and be able to handle the data that is coming from vendor systems you know from on the core network, when the system's on, on the radio, on the transport, and all kinds of different applications as well. And we believe that this provides uh, the best mix of both flexibility to our customers, as well as you know, the speed and the time to market in order for our customers to actually realize a fast return on investment on all of that. Uh, money that they have spent in building up their AI and ML capabilities as they move towards an autonomous network. And at the end of the day, we encapsulate all of this into our product, um, which is called uh, the, the data suite. And uh, we help customers with 
out of the box data products that are relevant from a telecoms uh, industry perspective so that they can you know move very very quickly and we accelerate the rate of deploying ai ml applications for business logic we have so much that you know development of something commercial moves from months uh, to weeks and uh, we are very proud of what we are doing um, and we continue to work and innovate in this particular space in order to ensure that for closed loop automation to truly happen we are able to provide that data management observability and next best actions layer that will drive you know the second half of how these actions would be implemented in a completely autonomous fashion for all networks, um, whether it's 4G, whether it's 5G, and you know, 6G. Great, Jay. Thanks very much indeed, but we must leave it there for now. Really good talking with you, and thanks so much for sharing your views with us today. It was a real pleasure. Thank you very much, guys.